Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker. In today's video, we're gonna be brutally honest about the 2020 NBA draft because everybody does a draft video, right? Every time you look on YouTube, there's all these different people, winners and losers, uh, what we learned about the NBA draft. That's not what we're doing today. You know, we sometimes, you know, you gotta step it up a notch and you just gotta be really uh, assertive about your takes. And you gotta let people know what's really going down. And we're gonna be brutally honest about the 2020 NBA draft tonight. But quickly, before the video gets started, if you enjoy content like this, then consider subscribing. I upload twice a day, every day, throughout the entire NBA offseason. Also, if you enjoy the content, like the video. It helps me out a ton. I would really appreciate it. You can also check me out at various socials at the bottom of the screen, including on Twitch, where we absolutely crushed it tonight. With that said, let's go and get started with the video. So the first thing that needs to be said about this draft is there was, there was some idiot that was saying that this draft was gonna have so much movement at the top. And it was gonna be one of the most exciting and unpredictable drafts that we'd seen in years. Someone even said that this draft would set the record for the most trades in a single draft. Where were the trades? You know, where, where was our, our, our number one overall pick being traded? Our number two, our number three overall pick being traded? Where was all the movement up and down? Where was Boston packaging their picks together and moving up? Where was Dallas making a big move in the draft to go get another player? Where was someone trading up into the top 10? New York going to get LaMelo. Where were all the trades? Woj, Shams, what were we doing? Sleep at the wheel? What were the GMs doing? Sleep at the wheel? I don't... I don't understand it, and I don't understand the predictions being made either about how this was going to be such an exciting, exciting draft. What are we doing? I guess we'll talk about the teams now. I mean, number one, Minnesota selects Anthony Edwards. Congrats. Deja vu all over again. You got Andrew Wiggins. Congratulations. You got, you got Andrew Wiggins, but, but you know, the version that doesn't even like basketball, doesn't even want to play basketball, wants to rap or play football. Congrats. Enjoy that. See how that feels the second time around. Number two, the Warriors, you get James Wiseman. Yeah, this, this is the guy that, you know, big time high school star, right? Goes to college, big time player, doesn't play a ton in college. I'm sure he's really gonna enjoy fitting into the Warriors system and averaging 10 and seven for the first three years of his NBA career. No possible way that goes wrong. You know, because every time we see a highly touted high school guy, you know, get drafted to a team that just wants him to, to rebound and score in the paint, that goes perfectly well, right? Yeah, that should go well. Number three, Charlotte, you get LaMelo, congrats. You know, that, that's exciting. You know, what's, you know what's the most exciting thing about that entire thing? The fact that we finally get to see our LeVar MJ 1v1. That's the most exciting thing about LaMelo there. He, he's, he's immature. He doesn't know how to be a professional. He shoots his, with his arms sideways. You know, every single ball brother has been a bust and a disappointment. And LaMelo is going to carry on that tradition in Charlotte. So have fun with that one, Hornets fans. Look at that backcourt of Devontae Graham, Terry Rozier, and LaMelo Ball averaging 30% from three-point range next year. Congrats on that one. Number four, Chicago selects Patrick Williams. I'm not sure what's the bigger reach. Taco Falls wingspan or this pick. As soon as it was selected, it was it was the Cam Johnson of this draft. As soon as the pick was made, everybody's looking around like, they did what? Made absolutely no sense. This was, the, this was the pick that nobody wanted. Nobody wanted to be fourth. That's why we thought there was gonna be so much movement to get in the top three in this draft. And I mean, of course the Bulls screwed it up because why wouldn't they? Number five, Cleveland, Okoro. This guy might as well not even cross half court on the offensive end of the floor. You're like, yeah, he can defend. Congrats. You can have five players on that end. But on offense, he might as well stay under your basket. Congrats. You're going to be playing four on five every time your top five pick is on the court next year. Enjoy that one. Number six, Atlanta. Got a backup five man with the sixth overall pick. That should be fun. You know, him backing up Clint Capella and that, a nice little 15 minutes per game. That should be fun. Maybe they should try and, you know, run this one back and, and trade him along with Trey Young for Luka. You know, maybe they should just throw that extra pick in there. See if that goes well for him. Number seven now, Detroit. Pretty confident that Crispy Flakes is the only guy in the entire world that can name more than three players that are currently on the Detroit Pistons roster. They traded away Kennard for absolutely nothing. Christian Wood is going to leave in free agency. Couldn't tell you who else is on the roster. I think Balake? Balake Griffon might be, other than that, I have no idea. Number eight now, the Knicks. Another power forward. You're, you're making my job too easy. There's just, like, there's actually no way that they did that, right? Another power forward. Like, I've never broken character in a video before. <sighs> Number nine, the Washington Wizards. You know, they get Denny, the mystery man of the draft. 
I was actually reading up on a prospect profile of him and it said, NBA comparison, Jan Vesely 2.0. Congrats on that one, Washington. Enjoy that one. But now we got to talk about some general teams. Boston, what are we doing? You go into the night, you've got three picks. People are saying that there's no way that you go through the entire night, right? Without trading one of the picks. There's moves to be made. You're moving, you're shaking. Three first round picks. You don't need three rookies. Well, you know, they, they they actually didn't make a selection with all three of their picks. They traded the 30th pick in a trade that the details are so irrelevant that they still haven't been announced. So, Danny, seat's getting a little warm for you, bud. Might want to keep an eye on that one. Next up, Philadelphia 76ers. Everybody's all excited because they they traded away Al Horford, right? And, and they finally got rid of that contract, dumped it like a bad breakup. You traded away a 2025 basically unprotected pick. I've never seen a fan base so excited about trading away a 2025 basically unprotected first round pick. Maybe try not signing the 40 year old guy to a contract worth 50 plus million dollars a year. Maybe we'll try that one on for size next time, Philadelphia. Nothing to be excited about there. I don't understand that one. The Brooklyn Nets just couldn't help themselves, could they? They traded for a clipper that was just involved in one of the worst postseason collapses in league history. Those two certainly deserve each other. The, the, the Clippers and Nets should only be allowed to trade with each other because they're just a match made in heaven there. Perfect. Last up, the Orlando picking this draft's version of Austin Rivers, a highly touted high school prospect who is a bust in college. He's going to be a bust in the NBA and has an NBA father who they're going to end up being 10 times worse than in their actual NBA career. So Congrats on that one, Orlando. And then last up, I just want to say, what's the deal with all these NBA analysts, huh? Yeah, hyping up all these different trades. There's going to be so much movement, you know? Uh, it's, it's going to be the most exciting draft we've seen in forever. Woj and Shams are going to be working overtime. I was really locked in for all those second round picks that got traded tonight. All those future picks that got traded. All the moves in the 20s of the draft. That's not what we're there for, you know? That's not why we're tuning in. That's not what Woj and Shams are there for. Chris Haynes can report that stuff. Huh? What are we doing, Kevin O'Connor? What are we doing, The Ringer? What are we doing, Yahoo? Huh? You can't play with our hearts like that, you know? I mean, some of us, some of us kind of live off this stuff, man. Like we need, <clears throat> we need exciting stuff to happen in the draft. And when the draft starts and we don't have a pick until pick 17, can't play with us like that okay just warning you for next time can't play with stuff like that messed up with all those things said hope you guys enjoyed the video if you missed any of my previous videos be sure to check out the boxes on the screen and i'll see you all next time maybe